Now, KLBK Sports with Gene Dumont. Welcome back. Major League Baseball kicked off their season earlier this week, but high school baseball has been in full swing, and today, that was no different. So let's head up Highway 82, where the Idaho Wildcats hosted the Roosevelt Eagles. But before they could start, hey, you gotta put the finishing touches on the field, right? Top first, runners on second and third, two outs. Could Roosevelt come through? Well, if you ask Colin Isbell, no. He gets Kevin LeMay to ground out to second, and that will end the Eagles' threat. Let's go to the bottom of the first. Sack, there's a sack fly to take the lead for the Wildcats. They've got a runner on third, and Hayden Davey, he gives Idaloo more cushion with the RBI single up the middle to make it 2 nothing Wildcats. Jump to the bottom of the second. Runner on first with two outs, and Jared Stevens, he's gonna hit a shot to center. It's just over the head of the center fielder, and hey, it's enough for an RBI double, and that's gonna make it 3 nothing Idaloo. The Wildcats would go on to win 11-1. to the Red Raider baseball team, they're hoping to take the series from Baylor with a win today over at Rip Griffin Park. This is the Red Raiders' third straight Big 12 series at the Rip, and this game, well, it didn't start the way Tech would want. The Bears got out to a quick start. Bases loaded in the top of the first, so that puts Cameron Smith in a jam. Aaron Dobson hits a chopper down the third baseline. Tanner Gardner is able to field it, but he loses the handle, allowing Logan Brown to reach home safely and give the Bears an early 1-0 lead. Still in the first First base is still juice. Joe Sabatini ropes one to center, and it'll be good enough for a sack fly. That's going to bring home Hayden Ross, so the Bears out to a 2 nothing lead after one. On to the bottom of the second. Good, Eric Gutierrez reaches with a walk. He's second in the Big 12 right now in walks, by the way. And that's going to bring up Quinn Carpenter. And hey, he knows what to do. He's going to knock a bomb over the left field wall, bringing Gut around the base path with him. And the Raiders and Bears were knotted up at two apiece at that point. This one, though, would end in a wild fashion. Orlando Garcia, first career home run. It's a walk off in the 12th. Tech looks for the sweep tomorrow at 2 p.m. Over in Arlington, the Rangers and Astros are prepping for game two of their three-game series this weekend. And last night, the Astros got the leg up in the series by defeating the Rangers 5-1 behind the hitting of Jake Marisnik, who went three for three and had two RBIs. Tonight, Roberto Hernandez gets the start for the Astros while Giovanni Gallardo takes the mound for the Rangers. First pitch is just about 30 minutes away. We are now through three rounds of the 79th Masters, and Deja Vu from 1997 has kicked in as a 21-year-old is leading the way. Though this time it's not Tiger Woods, it's former Texas Longhorn Jordan Spieth, and Spieth has a four-stroke lead over the closest competitor, Justin Rose. Spieth is also 10 shots better than Woods, and you can catch the final round tomorrow right here on KLBK at 1 o'clock. Well, speaking of the Masters, even though Texas Tech senior Matias Dominguez didn't make the cut at the Masters, he did finish fourth among the amateurs in the event and even scored better than former Masters winners Fred Couples and Mike Weir. Red Raiders golf coach Greg Sands feels that that can only help Dominguez going forward. As a Texas Tech fan, you've got to be happy mm -hmm. to see that, knowing know. that even though he didn't make the cut, hey, it's going to help him. And Hands th down. three of his teammates actually spent over $1,000 to go watch him and support him. Oh, that's good. Those are like little insights you don't know. Thank you for sharing. Well, Thank we you. appreciate Gene and we'll be right back.